Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. It's no surprise that I'm super excited about the Steam Deck, and one of the main reasons I'm really excited about this thing is for emulation. If you're a regular viewer of the channel, you know that's really what I love to do, and ever since this was announced and a lot of people were able to get their pre-orders in for this thing, I've had a lot of my viewers asking about emulation, and more specifically, what do I think this thing's going to be able to emulate at full speed? So in this video, I'm going to go through a list of some of the higher-end emulators that I personally like to use, and let you know how I think they're going to perform on the Steam Deck. Now I don't have a Steam Deck in my possession to test out the performance here, but if you watch my channel, you know I do a lot of Ryzen APU builds, I do a lot of Ryzen mobile APU testing, and I've done emulation on basically everything that you can put an emulator on. So as we already know, the Steam Deck is going to be running Steam OS right out of the box. It's based on Arch Linux. We will be able to install Windows, and to run some of these emulators at full speed, I do suspect that we will have to install Windows. So while I'm going through these, in the back of my mind, I'm kind of thinking just general emulation emulation performance, be it in Windows or Linux. So uh, like I mentioned, some of these emulators only work for Windows, but I still wanted to throw them in there because once I get my hands on a Steam Deck, I'm going to be testing out Steam OS and Windows. We'll do a ton of different testing on this device. And all of the emulation footage that you're going to see in this video was actually running on a Ryzen embedded APU. It's a very low end APU and the Steam Deck has way more power than that little thing does. So with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump right into it. So first on my list, Dreamcast. Yes, we're going to be able to emulate Dreamcast at full speed on the Steam Deck, there's no doubt about it. There's a couple emulators that we're going to be able to choose from. Redream would be my personal go-to, but if you want to use Flycast, be it the standalone version or the RetroArch version, remember, we only have a 720p screen, so we will be able to go up to 720, but if you want to connect this to an external display, we'll be able to upscale even higher with either of those emulators. Next on the list, PSP. I'll personally be using the standalone version of PPSSPP. And again, just like Dreamcast, I don't think we're going to have any issues with PSP. We will be able to go up to 720p on the built-in screen and even higher when we're uh, connected to a different display. And uh, when it comes to the harder to run games like uh, Chains of Olympus, Ghost of Sparta, Midnight Club Dub Edition, it's going to run it just fine. Moving up in the systems to GameCube and Wii using the Dolphin emulator. Got a good feeling that we're going to have amazing performance out of the Dolphin emulator, be it running your GameCube games or your Wii games. When it comes down to it, the Dolphin developers have done an amazing job with this emulator already. It does work amazingly on these Ryzen chips. The mobile chips handle it just fine. And even the lower end embedded Ryzen chips do a great job with this, even upscale. So yes, I do think we'll be able to get full speed out of GameCube and Wii. Next on the list, we have PS2. Now, when it comes to these Ryzen mobile APUs, I've always had really good luck with PS2 emulation using the DirectX 11 backend. And unfortunately, in Linux, which SteamOS is, we won't have access to that DirectX 11 backend, so we'll be stuck with OpenGL. But luckily, the OpenGL drivers for these AMD chips in Linux have always been much better than they have been in Windows. So I do think we'll see decent performance out of PS2, but I can almost guarantee that some games will struggle a bit without a bunch of hacks on in the background. Original Xbox emulation has come a long way in the last year or so. Personally, I use CXBX Reloaded in Windows, and I've tested this on some lower-end Ryzen chips with Vega graphics. With some tweaking, I was able to get a lot of these games that are compatible with the emulator running at full speed. So there is a good chance that right out of the box, the Steam Deck will be able to play some of these games pretty well. And uh, down the road, as long as the developer of said emulator can get their hands on this, they can do some more optimizations tailored towards the Steam Deck. SimU, the Wii U emulator, is just another one of those really great emulators that has come a very long way, and it's still going. It's getting better and better every single day. And I got a good feeling that the Steam Deck will handle this emulator, and if it doesn't, let's say right out of the box, if the developers get their hands on a Steam Deck, which I'm sure they will, they'll make it work. So I'm pretty sure we'll see some really good Wii U emulation on the Steam Deck. PS3, using the RPCS3 emulator. I've tested this on a lot of lower-end Ryzen's, and for some of the easier-to-emulate games, like the one you're seeing on screen now, Tekken 6, it runs at full speed. When you get to the harder to emulate stuff like the God of War series and even Skate 3, the Steam Deck may struggle a bit because when it comes to those harder to emulate PS3 games with RPCS3, it heavily relies on clock speed, cores, and extra threads. With the Steam Deck, we have a boost up to 3.5GHz, 
four cores and eight threads. So at a 15 watt TDP on the Steam Deck, we might be hard pressed to play some of those games like Skate 3, but as long as we can up the TDP on the Steam Deck to get those higher boost clocks for longer, we'll probably have some really good performance out of the harder to run games. I'm not gonna say it's gonna run every PS3 game at full speed because when it comes to like God of War 3 for RPCS3, even my eight core 16 thread Ryzen CPU running at 4.7 gigahertz struggles. When it comes to Sega Saturn, I also think that we'll see some awesome performance out of this using Yobase and Jiro. One of the main things that I'll personally be running on this is RetroArch, so I can have all of those cores ready to go. And I'm kind of excited to test out the upscaling feature with Yobase and Shiro and Sega Saturn on this device. When it comes to 3DS using the Citra emulator, it's always been hit or miss on these AMD APUs for me, and it really comes down to using Windows with those really bad OpenGL drivers. It does rely on OpenGL as long as you have it enabled, and we do have better OpenGL performance with these AMD APUs and Linux, so it's going to be interesting to see how well the Steam Deck will handle the 3DS emulator, especially with a little bit of an upscale going. I think we'll see some really good MAME performance using the standalone version of MAME or using certain cores inside of RetroArch. Naomi and Atomas Wave should perform really well on this device using the Flycast core inside of RetroArch, or if you want to use a different emulator, it shouldn't be an issue as long as you can get it up and running in Linux or Windows. N64 is another one of those systems that the Steam Deck is just going to dominate. I mean, if we take a look at N64 emulation on the Raspberry Pi 4, it's definitely not perfect, but it's getting there. And uh, I think when the Raspberry Pi 5 comes out, we're not going to have any issues. So uh, taking a look at the specs on the Raspberry Pi 4 versus the Steam Deck, there's no doubt that N64 is going to perform amazingly on this thing. And the final one I wanted to talk about here was Switch using the Yuzu emulator. Now, I have tested this on lower-end Ryzen APUs, I've never really had good luck with it, but on the 11th Gen Tiger Lake i7 and i5 CPUs, I've been able to get it to run at full speed, and it actually performs really well. So there is a chance that we'll be able to run some of those games at full speed on the Steam Deck, I mean, right out of the box. And when it comes to the lower end stuff, Neo Geo, SNES, NES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, there's no doubt about it, it will perform amazingly on this device. Those emulators perform well on the Raspberry Pi 4, and with the Steam Deck here, we're working with a lot more CPU and GPU power. So there's no doubt about it, those lower end systems are going to perform just fine. But I'm super excited about the release. I cannot wait to get my hands on one. Some of the first things I'm going to be doing here is some emulation testing, so definitely stay tuned to the channel. I do have my pre-order in. I'm hoping I can maybe get one early, but I seriously doubt it. I mean, I've messaged them several times. I've never got a response. But as soon as I get my hands on this, I will make a ton of videos. Let me know in the comments below what you're most excited about seeing running on the Steam Deck, be it emulation or PC gaming. It can be a specific game. It can be a specific emulator with said game. It's really up to you. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. I don't have a doubt in my mind that this is going to be an awesome emulation handheld. But, uh, you know, we got to wait till we can get our hands on one to test it out. If you have any questions, let me know down below. And like always, thanks for watching.